playing both of you. I'm the <laughs> only one that had to play the pair of you at that tournament, and I do feel a little bit aggrieved. But we are off now, and hey, it's that all oh, that Rafiki you mentioned before gets inked, and it's a broom coming down. And if you get a minute, try and spot the ink. There we go on Tim's left arm. Mm, very interesting. So we see definitely amethyst from Tim, and yes, Spessy uh, is playing this emerald sapphire deck, which I have seen. I'm not going to give you a full card count list. Let's leave some surprises. But we did already see he had the uh, Cheshire, Cheshire Cat. I believe it's Lost in Shadows, who is an eight-cost uh, inkable Floodborne, can shift for five. And when it exerts, or uh, yeah, when it exerts, you banish a damaged character. So uh, Spessy running some spice here. Uh, Tim's going to play one jump ahead to get some additional ramp and passes back over. Yeah, always nice. That Cheshire Cat That's there all is do. already going into the ink. <laughs> He's not got a lot going on, Ross, unfortunately. He does not. He's got two ink down, but nothing else. Tim gets his third ink there, and we are questing with Broom, and we are playing a Maleficent as well, which, of course, draws Tim a card on play. It's a card I never liked as much as you, but I'm starting <laughs> to come round on that one. Yeah, no, I've, I've been kind of fighting Maleficent's corner for a while now. I'm a big fan. She's a great consistency card. But, yeah, now fully revealed after that one jump ahead that Tim is playing... Uh, Sapphire Amethyst, or Blurple, as it tends to be known amongst the community. Super strong uh, ink pairing, lots of draw, lots of ramp. Uh, Joe is going to ink a Flavisham, which can never feel great because it's such a powerful piece, but he needs to get he needs to get ramped up and get some of these big characters in his hand online. You see Gaston, two copies of the Intellectual Powerhouse, and we see Milo Thatch in Spessy's hand. What an absolute legend. This Milo Thatch, a floodborne from Into the Inklands. And when it's banished, all opposing characters are returned to their owner's hand. Yeah, that's kind of annoying, honestly, but it quests for free, so you don't really want to leave it sitting on the board doing its nope. thing all the time. That is absolutely right. But, yeah, some two really strong decks here. Um, we're going to see... Oh, down comes the Maleficent 5-drop. Yeah. Uh, this is the one that draws a card on quest, and you can remove damage counters from your own side of the field to the opposing side of the field. So I absolutely love this. Both players bringing very untraditional decks, trying to make some spice work and yeah just to finish my point off about um joe spessy he's a fantastic player he knows this game inside and out he's had great success uh, the, at the latest set media championships he was the overall winner he beat me in the finals absolutely destroyed me ross 2-0 with his amethyst steel deck and very well deserved a really strong player and here he is now on the showcase stage which i'm sure he'll be glad for and down comes the beast with rush super good 4-4 and can immediately challenge that broom yeah, it takes out the broom straight away, but there's still a lot there. That Maleficent lets you draw a card when you quest, but every time you draw a card, whether with Maleficent or otherwise, you get to move a damage counter from chosen character to chosen opposing character. So you can move damage around your opponent's side or from your side to your opponent's side. You've got a lot of different options, and Tim and Spessy here really challenging our knowledge of Lorcana cards, bringing out, I think it's fair to say, lesser played card. Oh, absolutely, yeah. This beast, I was struggling to remember the sub name, but it's Wolf Spain. Five cost uninkable 4-4 four, four from chapter one. Quest for two has rush and the raw ability on play exert all opposing damaged characters. So a nice utility. Tim's going to play the Robin Hood, which does allow him to draw a card if your opponent has more cards in their hand. And it gets evasive during your turn. Yeah, it means it can challenge evasive characters, but it doesn't evade your opponent. So it looks like we are questing with Maleficent here, which of course will allow Tim to draw a card, which unfortunately doesn't do the, the moving damage ability, but maybe later. And it looks like another quest with the other Maleficent here, putting Tim up to six lore in total. Makes sense. And you know, I, I love the Mama Odie in Tim's hand, the Sapphire card. Uh, whenever you um, add a card to your Inkwell, um, you can just add another one off the top of the deck. Well, just, just for nothing. Uh, the Beast Wolf Spain is going to take out the Maleficent, remove that draw engine that Tim's got going. But yes, uh, Spezzi with a lot of big, powerful characters that he needs his ink for. We're going to see Milo Thatch into the ink well. With Fishbone Quilts, it is, uh -huh. of course, uninkable. And down comes Gaston, which would be a card we hadn't seen in ages if we hadn't seen it in round one of the tournament today. Let's, uh, let's Joe get the top three cards and grab one of them to put into hand, but also quest for free of a 4-4 stat line, which
which is not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. It will be able to completely trade with that Robin Hood. And yeah, just that effect to, to look at the top three cards of the deck and have a little dig. We saw the genie on the job uh, was added to Specy's hand on play. You can bounce a character back to the owner's hand. We're going to see that Porpoise call heal off that bull, uh, Beast Wolfsbane a little bit. Sounds good, meaning that that Maleficent won't be able to just straight trade for it in this turn. So nice play there from, uh, from Joe. Yeah, that's a fun one. It does look like both players here struggling to build a particularly reliable board. Lots of characters being removed. Joe does finally have that Gaston down with a little bit more bulk than some. But we got four ink being played here. Is that the Mama Odie you meant? No, that's, no, that's, that's a Grandma Tala. Yeah, 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 I'm sure that Mama Odie will come down soon. But yeah, just a little bit more card draw. And I also saw the Enchanted Elsa in Tim's hand. Absolutely beautiful card. And very strong. Doesn't see a lot of play in meta these days, but a strong card card that I'm ready to see it come back. Yeah, absolutely I am. And if you're thinking, hang on a second, Tim's got a lot of enchanted cards in this deck. Yes. Yes, he does. He has told me explicitly that go. most of his salary goes back into the deck. <laughs> It does give it does give Joe an extra ink, but it does also get the best character off of his board. It might not be a fair trade here, this unfortunately. This double ramp here, Ross, playing one jump ahead with Mum Rodi on the field. As I said, whenever you, uh, oh, sorry, ramp, I will explain in a moment. But yeah, we're adding it into the ink well, and if Mum Odie's on the board, then you can just add another one from the top of the deck. But yeah, if you're a newer player, if you hear to us referring to ramp, that is us basically talking about accelerating how quickly you're filling up your ink well. So obviously, you can ink every turn, standard, but can't like Fishbone Quill, one jump ahead, plenty more um, that allow us to just accelerate that. And it tends to be known as ramping in the community. So and it's something Tim's very, very good at. Yes. He's got 12, is that 11, I think 11 ink down at the moment. He, um, I mean, it does come a point where you're like, Tim, mate, you've got enough ink. So Keep just, your cards in your hands. He's got plenty of ink, <laughs> plenty of uh, resources there. I've just heard that we are getting very close to the next round of the official tournament. So these guys are on a clock. They're going to be playing super quickly to try and show you as much of these decks as possible. And you can see the clock at the top there. That is going to be the limit, unfortunately. Throughout the rest of the day, if there are other rounds where games end quickly, then we will, of course, do our best to try and bring you more of these cool showcase games. Because I'd love to watch this play out completely. And hey, maybe we will. Maybe Tim will get there in the next three minutes. He's got, the, he's got the ink for it. He has definitely got the ink for it. And hopefully at some point, Joe will get off the board and get some law. Just does, some. Does have Hades on board. Um, and that uh, that Beast has been basically having to challenge every turn. Really so has. Hasn't, has, hasn't left him any room to be. Oh, investing. here comes yeah, the Elsa. Look at, that, look at that face from, from Spezzi. <laughs> Just a media awe. She's so beautiful. And her effect to exert two chosen characters. And they can't ready at the start of the next turn. So, yeah, it was Spezzi's turn. He couldn't re-ready them. He played down another Hades to remove that Elsa, but that's about it. And passing back over to Tim. Yeah, Tim has got effectively infinite ink at this point. So what can he do with it? Is that a... Oh, he's running Dig a Little Deeper. There you go. Another, another man that is a Dig a Little Deeper stand. It makes, I think it makes a lot of sense in this deck in particular. You've got so much draw and ramp. Finding those key pieces sounds pretty good. Yeah, Mama Odie there just traded with Beast. Finally got that Beast off of the board. It's been a bit of a menace so far. So we use some of that ink to play down Bell. And that is going to be questing for a lot. And then we've also got Let It Go to take a character away. And look, that Bell is going to be potentially ending the game for Tim in the not too distant future. That Bell is, well, we've seen Beast. Now we've got the Beauty down. And that Beauty might be finishing this game out. Or will it? Genie. No, because Genie's down. Returning the bell back to Tim's hand. When, when Tim put that bell hound, the bell, bell down, the look on Joe's face just, you what, mate? What, 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 what is going on? But he was able to deal with it with that genie on the job. Slow Tim down a little bit. He does have uh, plenty of ink to make be uh, let Bell quest for five. Yeah, and the thing is, it just, the, the, the bell only has four costs. So Genie pops it back to hand. You can replay it, but <laughs> you can't quest it right away. There's another Elsa. There's the bell comes back down again. You've got Grandma Tala questing, putting Tim up to nine. Because there's ten or more cards in the inkwell, and that's putting it lightly, Bell will be questing for five from now on. 100%. And uh, just that uh, Spezzy's face again when that second enchanted Elsa came down. What is going on, mate? He's going to throw down his luck 
lucky dime, uh, which he does. He have enough ink to immediately exert it and gain two law from the genie on the job or the Hades. Yes, I believe so. Excellent. Well, that's uh, he's a bit more in the race now. He's done a good job of slowing Tim down, like having removing that Maleficent straight away with the beast. He's been able to bring down a couple of Hades and genie on the job to try and help the tempo a little bit. But look at all this ink that Tim's got, and then this board of Elsa, Belle, and Tala. Yeah, it's 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 not looking good. It really isn't looking good. Um, Tim really does seem to be in control of this. And every time Joe does something about it, Tim's like, yeah, but also I have these cards. Oh, there's another bell I just saw coming off the top there. If you want it, we are digging a little deeper here. And that means we do have an option of getting any of those cards we want. Do we go Enchanted Bell to really go aggressive into questing? I mean, there's a lot of other options there that could be very, very good. Interesting point. Tim's holding the Earth the Sea Witch Queen Enchanted. Same one that I just pulled. But the more interesting part is he got it from Joe. <laughs> Joe <laughs> pulled that Ursula in, 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 I think it was a sealed set championship he did or a draft, something like that. And I remember he traded it with Tim at the previous event for an Enchanted Tim. Bell. So maybe this is the villain in me, but I kind of want Tim to be Spessy with his own enchanted <laughs> But a huge jump there, questing with the uh, Bell, obviously, for five, the Elsa for three, and the Grandma Tala for an additional one. Putting a lot of pressure here on Joe. He's, a, he's at 18. The writing seems to be on the wall, but if anyone could do it, I believe that Joe can do it. I believe in you, Joe. They can't hear me, but he cannot in hear spirit, me. in spirit, he can hear me, I'm sure. Yeah, but we did at least manage to get rid of the Elsa and the Bell there. We have double Grandma Tyler, and that'll be enough. That's it. Tim takes the victory, and Joe is going to come back roll. behind the casting desk with you the next round, because, well, I think he's had enough playing for him. Yeah, yeah, it's time for him to stop playing around.